This is the inbox review for the 172nd scale aircraft from Sword of the AD4W Sky Raider, also known as the AEW1 uh, in Royal Navy service. So this is a bit of a different kit for the um, channel and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring a bit of diversity as well, something a little bit out of uh, my comfort zone, but still not a jet. So that's what we like. <laughs> I will get onto a jet one day, I'm sure of it. So uh, this is an unusual aircraft and something I'm not uh, very familiar with, I must admit. I do know the Douglas Sky Raider and uh, do like that aircraft quite a lot, but I'm more familiar with the US um, Air Force one, which like the one used in Vietnam. Uh, but this is a carrier-based um, early warning aircraft. So it's got the ra large radome underneath, which is um, a, a form of radar for early warning detection. And um, I'm sort of concentrating on the AEW-1 version, so the Royal Navy version, uh, which you get as an option in this, which is uh, that one there. But there's also the US Navy variant as well. It's the same aircraft from what I can tell, which is the AW4, uh, AD-4W. Um, and uh, literally all I know about it is this section here, which is written on the instructions, and that tells you all about it. Um, and it's, it, is, it is quite interesting, I must admit. So the UK seems to have had uh, 50 of these, uh, 20 which were built new, and 30 that were used, uh, taken from US Navy stocks. And this is through 1951, um, and they were used from uh, Cold Rose uh, down in Cornwall for training, and operated um, by RNAS 849. Uh, and as it says here, which proved four, uh, provided four plane detachments on British carriers. Uh, the flight of HMS uh, Bulwark took part in the Suez Crisis in 1956. And that was pretty much their claim to fame, I believe. Um, that's where they were operational. So if we have a look at the kit, now this is Sword. Um, this is a short run manufacturer. So you've got to think in the lines of Special Hobby, Azure, RS models, um, AZ models, all that sort of thing. So um, with that, it you got to, it takes some liberties with sort of fit. You, there's going to be possibly fit issues around. There's going to be um, slightly more expected from the modeler. So no locating pins and all of that. But there does tend to be quite a lot of detail. Usually you get a, a whole load of resin in a kit like this. This one you don't. And um, I must admit, I would think the cockpit is lacking for it. Uh, you get a resin engine and that's it. The rest of it's um, plastic. Uh, I've actually gone ahead and I'll show you in the top corner now. I've just picked up the um, 172nd uh, Edward Sky Raider etch set. Uh, for a normal Sky Raider, literally just to get some belts and some stuff to go around the cockpit. Not really interested in anything else, really. Um, mainly belts and um, a instrument panel, which I'm assuming is going to be a close enough in this scale. So that's something you might want to think about. It's the good old days of Edward where uh, they were putting out etch frets and they're sort of under £3, so it's really not much to ask. So as you go through the kit, we've got um, colour callouts are just in the straight descriptions of the colour so they're not using any paint manufacturer and that you know that's got its uh, its own pluses to it and we're starting here with the tail wheel um, section and the cockpit going together and then that starts to go in and we've also got a hook there obviously being a carrier based aircraft then the whole fuselage comes together and we're putting in a few small bits as far as uh, getting ready for where the engine is with some intakes some uh, louvers and all the rest of it then the resin engine goes in and the propeller is joined on we've also got uh, horizontal stabilizers going on as well it's all coming together relatively quick there's the uh, decal sheet so we'll come back to that in a minute uh, we've got uh, wheel well detail on the upper side of the wing as it goes together and we've also got some nice sidewall detail for the uh, wheel bays as well which is um you know it's pretty good for something in this scale you don't usually get that sort of detail so that's good we've also got separate flats going flaps going on there the fuselage coming onto the wing undercarriage starting to come together uh, with two-piece wheels um again the sort of thing you'd expect for a kit like this then a few um, smaller parts going on there to um, add in some more details with the undercarriage going on. And then we're looking at getting the shape correct uh, with a nice wide open, uh, a nice wide plan shot of the aircraft there. Radome going on, a few small, uh, more small details to finish off. And then we're into the painting schemes. 
So straight off we've got the Royal Navy one um, and this is the AD4W Sky Raider with the sort of Suez Canal as I would call it um, markings which is uh, you know their equivalent of the D-Day markings which is black over yellow and uh, it's a uh, glossy sea blue all the aircraft are all glossy sea blue all over with the identification markings on uh, below which are from decals you obviously got to paint the yellow and black stripes and then you've got a few bits of stencil, stencil data going over the aircraft there. Uh, we also get the yellow tips for the propellers as um, decals, which, you know, you can take or leave. Um, I, I may actually try them in this kit, but I usually just paint them. Then we've got um, two Navy, uh, US Navy schemes, which are very similar and very much of the time. So you've got the red bar in the stars and bars, which uh, sort of denotes the 1950s look. Um, and these are, this one is based in Korea. So this is 1952. And again, it's, it's you know it's a pretty colourful aircraft with with all of the decals going on, and quite a lot of stencil data. So it does add interest to the uh, single colour version. And then we've got another one here, which is based in the Coral Sea in 1950, and this is also U.S. Navy. And um, you can't really complain at the marking options there. It's all very open and very clear, and uh, it you know it really leaves nothing to the imagination. So I think that's a very nice instruction booklet. Then we're on to the decals. Now, these are printed by TechMod. I've used TechMod decals in the past, and they are pretty good. They're, they're very sticky, so I mean, you need to, you, you haven't got a lot of working time with them, which that's not a problem. They go down well. I just have noticed on this sheet, the carrier film looks very heavy. I'll see if, see if I can show you this. So if we look on the Navy there, you can see just you know, it's quite thick. It's very much like uh, Italieri decals tend to be at the moment. And um, some of the worst of the Tamiya decals are very, very thick like this. Now, I'm thinking that's going to sit up. I can't see that that's going to melt down too well. They're fine on the roundels where the, it, it's so tight that it's not really an issue. You, know, you can get away with that. But again, this is a candidate. We've been talking about this recently in um, some of the, the weekly shows that here... This is a perfect candidate to just do that in um, a mask set, for instance, if you are into cutting masks. That's that's um, something I may think about, or you could also cut around the um, carrier film as well, but it, I'm just thinking with the working time of these decals, it might be a bit difficult. The rest of the stuff's pretty good. Um, these are the, this, this goes around the door, so this is the yellow uh, warning or sort of hatching that goes around the door, and it's got carrier film across the whole lot. Now that aids um, placement, and I'm thinking that's probably not going to be too much of an issue actually, because it covers the whole door, you get the uniformity, and then you go into the panel line of the door. So you can get away with it in certain places, like with the walkways, the roundels, even with the um, propeller tips. It's just where you've got the big blocks of letters, you're going to see, I think you might just see a rectangle. So just something to think about. Not, uh, you know, not everyone's going to worry about that. The decal sheet as a whole is uh, extremely well printed, everything's perfectly in white register the white is extremely strong very nice strong white um i mean it, it, it's hard to fault it literally is just the there's a there's a lot of carrier films so it's just something to take um be aware of if that's something that worries you then we've got our one piece resin engine which is a nice addition it's uh there on its uh, casting block so you you cut off behind this uh lip here and then apply to the aircraft as the instructions show nice overall detail it's um yeah. for resin it could be you know it could be a lot more detailed but um i think it's crisper and better than what you would have probably got out of plastic in um compared to the rest of the kit so it's good from that point of view and for the scale i mean and the fact that the engine's going to be so far in the cowling you're not going to see a great deal of it it's perfectly adequate and it's a nice touch then we've got the separately bagged clear parts which are quite clear um they're, you know they're, again they're good enough for the scale um and considering uh, being short run again uh, it's it's pretty good there's no defects in there it's just a little bit thick on the uh, rear part there the windscreen's fine um but again if you're going to pose the rear part open i believe it slides back so you're not going to be wanting to look for it um then you've got all you've got also got some windows there for the attached from the inside for the doors and they're very nicely done they're, they're very clear so all good stuff there then on to the first sprue and this caters for both fuse large halves the ray dome horizontal stabilizers obviously got the wheels and then a few more details all across the uh, sprue there 
Now if we zoom in and we can look at a few more details, so we've got some nice engraved uh, panel lines here. Um, it's all, it's, it's, uh, I wouldn't say basic, it's all there, it's all short run, and it looks like that. Um, it's just slightly soft, but it's what you'd expect for this type of kit. Certainly once you've actually got the paint on and you start working with these panel lines, it's not going to be an issue. I've worked with quite a few short run kits and built a few in the past and they, they start off like this and the, the, the details always come out when you actually get in there. I mean, you've got exhaust there where they've made a, a, an attempt to hollow them out and you're just following that down with a drill just makes it such a, a cleaner sort of look. We've got the cockpit tub here which has some raised details on the sidewalls. As I said, it, it is worth looking out for that Edward set if you're at all interested in just perking it up a little bit because it's so cheap. It, 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 just adds a few small details and you can take what you want from it. So we've got the chair there as well, which goes in the back there. Um, the instrument panel has raised details there and holes for the dials. So uh, with careful painting, you could get that looking quite good. So we've got the radome there, which is um, molded in two halves. It's all smooth. There's no panel lines or anything. Um, and there's no locating pins, but for this, that should be easy just to line up the shape. Um, and getting a good, strong join there should help with the seam. Um, then we have some nice hub detail here as well and the wheels are molded in two halves looks like we've actually got some uh, brakes on the back there here's a close-up of the instrument panel as well and we've got a bit more along the fuselage so here you can see some more of the details here's the exhaust you can see what I mean by it just being a little bit soft um, but certainly nothing to worry about it's what you would expect for this type of uh, kit and manufacture uh, we could have a little closer look at the cockpit tub there as well and overall, it's looking pretty good. Then on to the last sprue, and that caters for the wing, uh, which shows you the sort of size of the aircraft. It's quite a big aircraft. We've got one piece lower wing, and then the two halves for making up the upper side of the wing. And um, all the rest of the parts here are just make up some small bits and pieces that go across the aircraft to add some detail. We've got quite a bit of tubing here that's for the undercarriage and the uh, hook there, and a few small details as well. Everything again is much in the same line as it was with the fuselage, so here you can see the details running across there with the nice panel lines, nice engraved um, ailerons and flaps there. We've got some nice deep grooves here as well showing where the uh, flaps are. This is a wing fold aircraft, um, there's no option for a wing fold in this one. Uh, I did see again on Hanant's there is, um, uh, for an older uh, Hasegawa kit, they, they did on Airwaves a um, conversion set, so presumably you could use that on this if you really had your heart set on uh, getting the wind fold going so again something possible to look at but yeah overall looks like a very nicely molded kit for certainly for the short run sort of style it's um everything i would expect haven't seen any problems there's no sink marks it's hardly any flash there's not really any mold seams it's um it's really quite good. So that is a quick look at the uh, 172nd AD4W Sky Raider, or AEW1, from Sword. I think it's um, an interesting kit. I don't think there's anything really um, too bad about it at all. I think it's, it's a really good attempt at this aircraft. I think um, if you were to add a few small scratch detail parts, just with a few sort of aerials, I can see there's meant to be an aerial up there. Uh, for instance, a few other smaller bits and pieces, I think it will really bring this aircraft up to the next level. There's no aftermarket that I can see uh, as of yet, apart from the uh, mentioned Edward set and uh, the Airwaves Wingfold set as well, which was designed for another aircraft uh, kit. But um, certainly, it's, if it's something you're interested in, um, I would think you'd want to probably pick this kit up because uh, I after doing a bit of research on this kit, it does seem like this, is, this variant hasn't actually ever been kitted before. Uh, it's always been conversions. There's been some in 148, but not in 172. So that's probably you know half of why it's such uh, a popular kit at the minute. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you like the video, please consider giving it a like. And um, stay tuned to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.